Carl from the Nerds of Color. How are you? I'm so good, Mike. How are you? I love your backdrop. <laughs> Thank you. I had to represent today. Yes. Uh, definitely excited to talk to you. You crushed it on the show, brother. You are oh. so amazing. Really, I really appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you for saying that. Thank you, Mike. Of course, of course. Uh, in in this amazing performance of yours, I have to talk. I have to ask you. I mean, like. Uh, can you talk about your experiences with the game, and did you take any inspirations from some of the Brotherhood of Steel characters to help mold your performance as Maximus? Well, my experience of the game was that if I knew, I, I knew fall, of Fallout. Like, I knew it in a way where I'd always seen the posters, I'd always known other friends to play that video game franchise, uh, and for for all the weirdest reasons, I just never got into it because of whatever I was playing, you know, or whatever I was doing at the time. And how weird to get this circle around where I get the live action version for myself to del delve into for work, you know. But it was it was not from any certain characters uh, that I pulled. I pulled from so many different sources for the character of Maximus. And, you know, the roadmap that Graham Geneva and Jonah Nolan had created, these scripts are just phenomenal. Uh, so I knew that I needed to build a character, one that could give aspects of the character that are like a player in the game where you, we see these choices that they have to make, but also a character that is really at war with himself, you know, between what is the right thing to do, what is the the glorious thing to do in a moment, and how being born and raised in the wasteland sort of shapes, I think, someone's morality uh, to be so drastically different than someone living in the world that we live in today. That's actually a perfect segue into my next question, because with these like little areas of morality that we see between Lucy and Maximus and the ghoul, you know, um, it's, it's so interesting to think about how they're kind of interconnected and just separated by timing, you know, really like the longer you're in this wasteland, the long, the closer you become to the ghoul, you know? Um, yeah. So apropos of that, in a nuclear apocalypse, what kind of survivor do you think you would be? Lawful good like Lucy, neutral like Maximus, or chaotic evil like the ghoul? You as Aaron. You, me as Aaron. <sighs> Boy, I think I would have to be a little more neutral. You know, I, I yeah. do think I, I you would have to be capable of something that is not okay in the world that we live in today. You know, I think you would need to find a way to survive, you know. Uh, and when it's when whether it's the irradiated monsters that we're talking about, or it's the other people that can be more dangerous than them, you know, it's uh, it's uh, you can't you can't just outrun every issue that you come across in the wasteland. So you would you would have to make some dark choices, I think. Absolutely, uh, you got to survive, right? Yeah. Just like everyone, Maximus, Lucy, everyone, you know. So. Um, I mean, the, the practical effects in this are just stellar. Phenomenal. You know, the suit of armor and everything. Yeah. What was it like stepping into that and kind of did you work around or move around in it at all? Or was that mostly, you know, uh, Adam visuals? Shippey Adam Shippey runs our hero suit, the full the full length. But I wear the top half of the suit uh, and I stand on Apple boxes. I mean, Jonah will be nice and say it was just, you know, just a, a zhuzh, like a like a heel. He just needs a little heel. But <laughs> No, it's uh, it's um, it's 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 also another aspect of it is a clamshell suit that the 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 team at Legacy you know helped collaborate with us and create these amazing different aspects of the suit to tell the story, but then what else? We've got the inside the helmet camera version you know as well. So you know Jonah did an incredible job I think orchestrating, especially for our first season. You know we're creating this world. And, and how to piece all these different aspects of it together to to bring to life the suit. It you looked so badass in it, brother. Oh, <laughs> like, good. It was just cool. You feel um, pretty badass for like the first twenty <laughs> minutes, and then you're like, "Oh, can someone take this off me? This is heavy." <laughs> um, my last question to you, and this is something that I asked Jonah, but I'm I'm so curious to to hear your answer. What would you say is the first thing humanity should prioritize in the event of a nuclear apocalypse? I wonder, <laughs> I'm curious as to what Jonah said. I mean, we've got we've got guys out there in the news now building vaults underground. People with means <laughs> building these elaborate shelters underground. I don't know. Maybe that's it. But hopefully we would, I mean, obviously just avoid the situation altogether, right? I mean... 
it, it doesn't bode that well. That should be the priority. Yeah, it really yes. doesn't bode well for our survival uh, and, and moving consciousness forward, if you will, you know. He said something very similar. He said community. So you guys are on the same page. Um, Aaron, this was wonderful. Max, this is wonderful. I can't wait for folks to meet him. And this is just going to be everyone's favorite series once it drops. Thank you so much for your time. This Mike, is amazing. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for chatting. Directors, comments, and the lectures. Fanboys, professional artists, and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you. Talking about the things that you like, too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard knock life. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective.